Hey guys, let's get more news about SAN Francisco 49ers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. QB Matthew Stafford on Rams' dramatic comeback over 49ers, NFL is an improbable business. Sean McVay spoke the word sitting on the tongue of every spectator following the Los Angeles Rams' inexplicable comeback win over the San Francisco 49ers. Holy S, McVay beamed. In the Battle of the California Walking Woundeds, the Rams trailed the Niners by double digits deep into the fourth quarter. Down 24-17, for 14 remaining and the Niners driving, LA's win probability was as low as 3.2% per next-gen stats. Then, mayhem broke out. Niners kicker Jake Moody missed a 55-yard field goal that would have put San Francisco back up 10 points. The Rams took just three plays from scrimmage to set up a Corinne Williams three-yard touchdown run to tie the game with 1.54 left. The defense then forced a Niners punt, which Xavier Smith returned to the 50-yard line. A deep shot from Matthew Stafford drew a defensive pass interference penalty, setting up Joshua Cardi's game-winning field goal. I'm not into improbable, probable, Stafford said, via the Associated Press. NFL is an improbable business, I'll tell you that much. You never know what's going to happen week in and week out. You've got to go out there and earn it and prove it, and we did that. Stafford is no stranger to the comeback. Sunday marked his 45th game-winning drive in the fourth quarter or overtime in his 16-year career, the seventh most since at least 1970. However, this week, he did so without his top two receivers, Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, as McVeigh shifted from his standard 11 personnel into more 12 personnel, two tight ends. While the Rams celebrated their improbable victory, the Niners lamented the miscues. You've got to take their hope away, Shanahan said per ESPN. You give Stafford too much hope, and, you put a ball in his hands at the end, it's not a situation you want to be in. The Niners, who themselves were missing Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel and George Kittle on offense, got a three-touchdown performance from Brock Purdy and a breakout performance from Jawan Jennings. However, the usually stout Niners D couldn't get a stop, allowing the Rams to score on each of their final four possessions. It was unacceptable, linebacker Fred Warner said. We can't do that. We can't beat ourselves. Can't make those type of mistakes again. All three phases have got to play better. We'll look at the tape, fix it, and move on. Shanahan's club fumbled a chance to add to their 14-7 halftime lead, watched Moody miss a long kick, couldn't generate a game-sealing first down, and allowed a fake punt conversion and a big punt return. That's where I thought we had a chance to run away with it, not give them any hope, Shanahan said. That gave them a lot of hope. Got them back in it, those are three big plays in the game. The sliver of hope is all McVay's club needed to avoid a 0-3 start. It marked the first game the Rams won in which they had a 14-plus point deficit at any point of the game since Week 2, 2012 against Washington, a club with Shanahan and McVay on the coaching staff. LA had been 0-28 in such games in the McVay era. NFC West Power Rankings, Seahawks Surge, 49ers Freefall in Week 4 It wasn't supposed to be this way nearing the first quarter mark of the regular season. The San Francisco 49ers, raging from yet another tough Super Bowl loss the previous February, were supposed to run through the rest of the conference like a gauntlet, certainly dominating the rest of the NFC West along the way, while the Seattle Seahawks and Los Angeles Rams would muddle around in the middle ahead of the still-going-to-find-a-way-to-finish-last Arizona Cardinals. Nope. Not even close. Instead, it's the Hawks who are surging, while the Niners appear to be on the verge of a complete collapse just three weeks into the year, falling victim to the now-apparent flaws on all three phases. It's still early, yes but three of the four NFC West teams are below the .500 mark. And, based on who has beaten who out of those three, San Francisco has nothing to brag about. Let's just get our NFC West power rankings entering week four out of the way, please.
sure, Seattle didn't face much of a contest by beating up on a Miami Dolphins team that's without a concussed quarterback, to a Tagovailoa, and was missing running back Raheem Mostert, cruising to a 24-3 victory in the Pacific Northwest, but the Seahawks simply played a banged-up team at the right time, handled their business and improved to a perfect 3-0 to take a commanding lead within the division. And it appears as if the connection between quarterback Geno Smith and wide receiver DK Metcalf is functioning at full throttle. If the Hawks make it a perfect 4-0 next week by beating the Detroit Lions, they'll be for real. After walloping the Rams the previous week, Arizona came back to earth a bit in week three, falling victim to the aforementioned Lions team that choked off time of possession and held the Cardinals to a one of nine mark on third downs. While it seems analysts were right to peg Detroit ahead of San Francisco in overall NFL power rankings to begin the year, Arizona has to get some credit, too, for hanging in against a Lions team that looks poised to make yet another deep postseason run. Oddly enough, thanks to an interdivisional win over LA already, the 1-2 Redbirds are second within the NFC West and in our division power rankings, too. San Francisco 49ers injury nightmare continues, George Kittle out against Los Angeles Rams. San Francisco 49ers tight end George Kittle has been officially ruled out for Sunday's Week 3 matchup against the Los Angeles Rams due to a lingering hamstring injury. The decision was confirmed on Saturday after Kittle was unable to practice on Thursday and Friday due to persistent soreness in his hamstring, which initially flared up following Wednesday's practice. Kittle had been listed as doubtful earlier in the week, but after further evaluation, the team downgraded his status to out. Kittle's absence will be a significant blow for the 49ers' offense, as he remains one of the most dynamic and reliable players on the team. Through two games this season, Kittle has posted 11 catches for 116 yards and a touchdown, continuing to demonstrate his ability to make plays in both the passing game and as a key blocker in the run game. The 49ers will now look to their backups and offensive depth to fill the void left by Kittle in this important NFC West divisional matchup. With George Kittle unavailable, the 49ers elevated tight end Braden Willis from the practice squad to provide additional depth behind tight ends Eric Saubert and Jake Tonges. Saubert is expected to start in place of Kittle, with Tonges serving as the backup. 49ers head coach Kyle Shanahan expressed confidence in Saubert's ability to handle the starting role. He stepped in well, and if he's got to do it all, he's up for the challenge, Shanahan said. He's shown he can help us in the passing game and the run game. Saubert has a well-rounded skill set, and while not as accomplished as Kittle, he is known for his blocking and short yardage receiving capabilities. With Saubert taking on a more prominent role, the 49ers will likely adjust their game plan to ensure he is integrated into both the passing and running schemes effectively. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of George Kittle? Leave your opinion in the comments.